Pathway CEO, Zuzan Stamirovska, discusses her journey to the IT industry, one which brought her to the world of data analytics and AI, and which ultimately inspired her to launch her own company. Zuzan shares her experiences along the way, offering advice as to how organizations can best focus on equality and diversity, and also explains how Pathway's real-time data processing solution works. Okay, um, simple enough to start. It'd be good to understand if you've always wanted to work in the IT space or if it's something you came to later on in life. Just, yeah. How did your journey in the IT industry begin? It actually came a bit later in life. So when I was in high school, I wanted to be a politician and I went to study economics and law at the same time. So it was actually, I was very far from the IT industry, if you wish. However, somehow, I mean, I got into it through economics. Uh, but my third year uh, during the undergrad, uh, undergrad studies, I went to Stockholm and I took a course in game theory. And somehow this felt just so intuitive to me. And I knew I needed to pursue in that direction. It was about the time also when I uh, had an internship uh, at Spot.com. That was the first and the largest community for competitive programmers in the world. So somehow they became my friends. Uh, and I actually I said I I I somehow entered this community, uh, learned game theory, and I knew I needed to pursue in that direction. I was thinking more of research and you know perhaps with prospects of becoming a consultant uh, later on. Uh, and then I went to a corporate technique, and this is kind of when where it all started. But still, I was focusing more on the research topics, game theory specifically, game theory on graphs. Uh, so very quickly became you know, very, very deep, <laughs> less about programming, more about the actual algorithms, uh, theorems to prove, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, during this, this, this journey, I, I got the chance to publish, uh, and some journals in theoretical computer science. Uh, I won, I won a prize and award for the best internship done at the laboratories of the Corporate Technique, which was very surprising. <laughs> so for me, it came, it came a bit of a shock, to be honest, because the Corporate Technique is a place where, you know, I mean, they, they get Nobel Prizes in physics. Yeah. Uh, and there are, of course, you know, many students who work in these laboratories who could have gone and gotten the prize. Um, it went to me for my work on all game theory and economics. I was extremely proud. And I remember one moment, uh, and somehow clicked for me. It's not even about tech, but just the ability to make a difference, you know, in this usually rather manly, uh, <laughs> manly areas. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I was growing up, somehow, like, it's a thing I had in my mind, and I think many, many women do, was this thought that, you know, I could maybe be a supporter of the kind of lead character, you know, I could be a wife of a Nobel Prize winner <laughs> or an assistant of a Nobel Prize winner, for example. But, just naturally, I wouldn't project myself as a Nobel Prize winner. And I remember when I was doing that internship at the Corporate Technique, and I was like kind of late at the office, drawing some doodles on uh, on a piece of paper. And there it was. I mean, I managed to prove a theorem. It was pretty cool. And I realized I'd done it, you know, all by myself. And this is the moment when I had this 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 like you know the the aha moment. Hmm. Again, hey. I could do this. It could be me. You know, I'm not there just to play a supporting role. Um, and I think this is where it started. I kind of felt empowered in a way that I can do things myself. I'm not there just to follow. And I'm then just... tech came, I mean, later, somehow naturally through, through the topics I was studying. So I was studying uh, game theory. In fact, algorithmic game theory. I mean, I was, I was very deep into, into the computer science rather than IT as such. But then, of course, you start implementing, right? So, so you learn things as you go. You mix in physics, you mix in <laughs> economics, everything. I did a PhD, and then uh, together with the friends I had, you know, back from Spodge and the community, I managed to to kind of uh, integrate, and then you know, social network I built. Uh, that's how I got into uh, into making pathway you know, reality later on. Yeah, so I've been that that's fascinating how you arrived, but also you, you say you obviously you got to Pathway now. So it'd be good to understand how you got from that initial inspiration to, as I understand it, founding founding your own company pathway. Um it'd be good to understand that that part of the journey as well. Absolutely. Um so usually when we do game theory on graphs, I mean game theory on graphs is kind of part of a larger 
scientific field which is called complexity science. And this is pretty much a science of complex systems. So imagine an enormous graph. Whenever you have a black swan effect, we say that something very small can change, you know, the uh the, the way the entire system or the world behaves, right? So black swan events are are part of the of, of the complexity science field. Uh it's is a science of modeling very large complex systems with a lot of relationships and, and interdependencies and then looking also at the element of time. So how they evolve over time. So computationally, it is pretty complex, <laughs> just, just as such. And there are many applications of the sort of uh, methods, just really like scientific methods to different use cases. Uh, so there are people, when I worked at the Institute of, uh, Institute of Complex Systems uh, of Paris, you know, at, within the same lab, within the same room, we would have physicists, computer scientists, we would have sociologists. Uh, it's a very nice science because it mixes up use cases and people with very, you know, it's very multidisciplinary. So in the same room, on the same paper, you will have people from multiple disciplines trying to solve and look at problems really holistically. And I think this is this is kind of what I had. And I also, you know, had this background uh, I actually went to the to, to Sciences Po, which is kind of French school for, for, for politicians. Uh, so coming from that background, I mean, I really like to be able to see problems in their kind of general form rather than just focusing on a very narrow aspect of them. And this is what complexity science gives, but with very, very concrete and you know, very, very, very tangible uh, tools. Um, and I was when I was at Institute of Complex Systems, uh, I was doing a PhD. And I had a chance to have a database of 30 years of daily movements of the world commercial fleet. It was such a brilliant database. <laughs> Everybody was jealous of that. Um, and I somehow got quite a lot of freedom uh, with respect to what I was able to do with it. Um, so I was studying this and I, I, wanted, I decided I wanted to find the rule according to which maritime trade evolves. Uh, so I wanted to find kind of the evolutionary model of uh, and a predictive model for for maritime trade. Uh, many people thought I was being crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, including some of my advisors. Um, but I did just that. So I, I it was it was a rather large bet during the PhD. But actually, it was kind of following my interest, following a bit of the opportunity that I saw in the topic, and you know tech parts, I kind of learned on the way. Because, you know, here and there, I needed to implement some code. I needed to run an experiment. I needed to, I needed to understand, you know, a number of things. So so, so, so then I was developing my skills. Uh, during my studies at the Ecole Polytechnique, of course, I mean, I, I, I had in-depth, uh, you know, I had a statistical background. Um, so, so let's say in terms of statistics methods, uh, I was largely covered. And then in terms of everything that was linked to graphs, uh, I I did it on my own, uh, but during the, the like research uh, research internships and, and, uh, and then my, my research work with some colleagues, um, especially in Canada. So yeah, I mean, I, I somehow learned it because I wanted to, it felt intuitive and great to think about the world in this way. Uh, and I think as any researcher, what you do, you kind of learn, you know, here and there, whatever is needed. Uh, to make your research work. And in terms of the, that journey, I mean, you say you, you had that sort of moment where you realised that you could be not just the, you know, the the, the helper, if you like, but the, the main person. Was um, was that in any, I mean, did you have negativity at all to what you're doing, you know, talking about women in the workplace and, as you say, the IT sector, fairly male-dominated? Were you getting any pushback from anyone or were you just you, yourself, as you say, not realising that you were just as good as, you know, all of the or the, the many males in the area? How, how did you, as I say, did you get any pushback or just your experience along the way? So I think there are, there are two effects. One is kind of our, you know, own uh, on perception of what we can do. I'd say that probably relatively to population, in my case, it's still pretty low. <laughs> so um, this is part of it. But the second are pushbacks. I'd say that when I moved to tech, so when I finished my PhD and when I started the company, the pushback, I, I don't see so much of pushbacks, but I did when I was younger. So I definitely saw it firsthand numerous times uh, when I was in academia. Kind of people trying to show you your place. It's it is a very you know 
hierarchical kind of uh, environment uh, when you talk about, about academia, but so so it could apply also to 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 to, to male students. Um, but definitely, it's even proven, you know, that when you're when you're a, a woman and you're you're co you're a quarter on a paper in economics, uh, this paper you quarter on the paper with a man in economics. This paper doesn't count towards the probability of getting a job for you, but it does count for your male colleague. Uh, so, for example, when I was at Ecole Polytechnique and I was doing that internship, uh, I actually for the I I did almost like I did the work for that prize, and I remember having a voice somebody asking me if it was in fact a colleague with whom I was sitting in the room, uh, and that was a male student, which was completely and I mean couldn't even be the case, but you know, somebody like, just because I'm a woman and somebody else is a man. I mean, that was uh, definitely gender inspired. Uh, so this I felt, uh, I think numerous times, and but in the previous previous life, let's say, before 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 I, I, I left academia. Uh, in IT, which, since I started Pathway, I think the main, uh, the main aspect of this is that I kind of created my own environment and the culture. So the company is in fact really supportive just by design. Uh, and everybody who works in, in Pathway, you know, we, we have a, we have a culture of respect by default. And this attracts, uh, there's somehow a self-selection of people who want to work at Pathway. Um, and then I think in terms of, you know, investors, uh, clients, and 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 other other stakeholders that we get to interact with, I wouldn't say that I felt you know uh, any any negativity, uh, which which could be linked to to my gender. And and when you created Pathway, obviously you you had you know um, a desire to implement your you know your tech technical knowledge and create solutions, but was part of the reason because you wanted just to create a company that had the values that you you know you aspired to and and as you alluded to there i think you know partly a different culture so that it was equality and was very much you know part of the the overall um equation as opposed to what you might have encountered elsewhere along the way i think i definitely saw an opportunity in uh, creating my own company as a place where i could make a difference and not be blocked so much on the way it may be true for any founder, male or female, if you wish, because we are rebels by definition. To be a CEO and to be a startup co-founder, you kind of just have to have this gene. You don't and want uh, anyone else telling you what to do. No. <laughs> it's like, it might be this. Um, but yeah, given my previous experiences, I mean, it could have been strengthened uh, you know, by, by the fact that I really wanted to forge my own destiny uh, and be able to, you know, to grow to my full potential on my own terms. And in terms, you say you you you've created a culture that sort of naturally attracts certain types of people. I mean, do, when it comes to the interview process and recruiting and so, do you, do you actively look to make sure that you have a, a good balance of females and males and and various you know, other diversities, or do you literally just look to get the best person? And because of the culture you created, the applicants you get naturally mean that you end up with a, a nice balance of people. If, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's say right, right now we're mostly looking for the right person for the job. Uh, I mean, also, especially given our stage, every new hire makes an enormous difference. Uh, we're mostly looking looking for the right person. But truth is, and this is this is feedback we're getting from from candidates and 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 from employees who join, the culture attracts them and make and also uh, increases retention. We have amazing retention, to be honest. Um, and yes, we see more diverse profiles. Uh, definitely, we have I think uh, like fourteen nationalities on the team, uh, and it's not an enormous team. We're twenty five right now. Um, and then in terms of of you know having more female uh, candidates, this is still a question, a bit of a funnel, unfortunately. Uh, one thing I see is that it may be faster to get women in the leadership roles uh, rather than. Uh, rather than as as developers, for example. So so just given kind of where the candidates are, um, we also have some preference in sourcing. So preference in sourcing, trying to find more diverse profiles when we have a position, uh, we will like the 
as say a female candidate will be more likely to get an interview. Um, I mean, so this is this is the the stage of the panel where we uh, we active we make we make an extra effort to to to, to get diversity. Um, like hopefully at at, at the end. Um, but then we see like the culture of respect is very strong, and frankly, this is something that we didn't even you know install. We didn't like it wasn't intentional. It's not like we wrote here we value respect, so we have to value respect. Um, at some point, we asked our employees and then like colleagues, um, what do you value about working uh, at Pathway, you know, the most? And there was just this one recurrent theme, uh, which was around respect. And the type of communication, you know, whenever we argue, we argue about the matter. We don't argue, you know, it doesn't get personal. We want to find the best, uh, the best solution for a problem, even if, if the views are are, are, are diverse. Um, so, yeah. And I wanted, bearing in mind AI, and I get lots of articles or, you know, bits of information sent to me about AI and ethics and AI and bias. Is it? particularly helpful in, in the area that you're working in to have this diversity therefore when you are working on on ai models or you know, the technical side of what you you're getting a, a good cross-section of people looking at it and you know spotting different things so you you end up not with you know a male dominated potentially solution to something but you're you're getting lots of feedback nationalities diversity etc so you you can be fairly confident that your you know whatever it is you come up with isn't being skewed in one way one way or the other i'd say in a number of ways in a number of ways so there are there are things which are linked to the very deep tech technology why we develop it how we develop it how we shape the product and then how are we able to interact with our users and you know with which groups we are able to communicate and somehow what's the energy around the company such as you know it can attract people um, so when we talk about the deep tech aspects, we like myself coming from a from being female, coming from a background which is very much very much focused around the use cases, and same for my co-founder Claire Noé. Uh, we are pretty much obsessed about the use cases. So compared to the very techy, uh, I mean sometimes I, I with, with with kind of all uh, all friendliness, I call I call this a t-shirt culture. You know, t-shirt companies where <laughs> we have guys in t-shirts and that's it. Um, we do focus on uh, how to make a difference, how to make an impact. I think a bit more than um, other technology companies who intuitively think about tech for tech, which actually impacts the way we design the product because we design the, the product, we design our technology to be able to solve real world challenges, including, for example, the way you should deal with real world generated data. Uh, which are very different you know, to the to, to, to very different, quite different to the um, to data generated by by digital systems. Uh, so there is one aspect of of, of this: kind of people from different backgrounds bringing in experiences um, with with actual use cases and then different methods, even in terms of kind of scientific fields, because this is also something that we have, which is I think pretty unique uh, on our team. Uh, this changes a lot, and this is probably why pathway the way our solution. Uh, I mean, it's so different to anything else that uh, that exists on the market. Um, then there is a question of how we are able to communicate with our users. So we are a tool for developers, and how can we engage? Right? How how to make it work such that people get interested? They they adopt Pathway, feel excited and comfortable about it. And then I think diversity is key. You need to find an effective way to communicate with diverse groups of people. Uh, and you can't do it if you just have, you know, copies of of one profile, uh, because then probably like you will be able to communicate well j just with their kind of social circles, but but it won't spread to to larger groups. I'm just wondering, uh, during your career, did you have any um, sort of female role models that inspired you at all, and? sort of linked to that did you have any mentors i mean they may have been male mentors but helped you on your journey and the the final part of the question if i may is therefore do you feel responsibility yourself to um be a role model and a mentor to help diversity and equality if, if yeah if you can sort of unpick that question if that's right yeah so i think i i didn't so first thing is that i don't think i felt i needed a female mentor i didn't Feel like I needed a female role model to feel that I can do something. I mean, that I can do something. Although then 
you know, for, for some reason, when I was pretty young, I, I thought I would be a wife of a Nobel Prize winner. So I may be a bit contradictory here, but I don't think that like the inspiration for me needs to come from a female. Um, so I did have mentors uh, who, who, who were male, who actually helped me a lot, you know, at the stages when I didn't have a company, you know, I wasn't kind of a successful founder who gets photos with the prime minister you know, on the stage. It's really, really back in the days. Um, one of them was um, was the head of uh, of an alumni group at the Ecole Polytechnique, Adomine de Robillard, who somehow took me under his wings and was, you know, encouraging me, helping me in coaching. Uh, regarding like I was, I was a PhD student back in the days, and uh, regarding this, regarding business, kind of just life, etc. And that was extremely helpful in terms of you know me having my own confidence that I have a some group of people to whom I belong that I can do things and I can accomplish them. Um, so this is this is one. Um, then in terms of role models, I mean, there are some people that I admire. Uh, I, some of them I, I got to meet in person. Um, Jacques Attali is one of them. This is a, a famous economist um, who, is, who is French. Um, then there are people whom I admired. I mean, they, they don't... I, yeah, you know, maybe from history, like uh, John von Neumann, and these are the greatest scientists of, of our age. Um, so these are these are the figures that I, I definitely admire, and yeah, they they would inspire me. But then you know, there are my co-founders, uh, who are who are pretty much on that list. So every day I feel extremely lucky that I get to work with them and and with our team. Um, if I I yeah, I didn't feel I didn't feel the need to necessarily you know, have a female role model. Uh and honestly, I didn't realize that being a female in these environments would be so tough. Uh before I experienced um the different, let's say different negativity when I was in academia. So it was it came a bit as a shock to me. And so do, do you then feel like any sort of added responsibility for the next generation or for your employees to make sure that you sort of remove any of the obstacles or you know, the, the issues that you came across just to make their lives a bit easier? Or do you think that the cult, culture, the overall company culture you've created means that, that you don't need to specifically look out for individuals? No, I think you absolutely need to look out for individuals. So this is, of course, depends on the on on the structure, right? They have the direct managers, but absolutely need to look out for 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 individuals. And this even, I mean, goes as deep as uh, as the way we're going to mentor people, um, and uh, and 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 how I mean, we as founders uh, have grown and are growing ourselves, and how we like what sort of importance we assign uh, to helping, like to to making our people grow. I think I think it goes kind of we have to start with ourselves to then propagate throughout the organization. Um, and I think it goes it goes through mentorship. It goes through mentorship and also you know not being shy and assigning responsibility um to people without bias, right? So like us, we're not having bias when we assign uh responsibilities. Um but then yeah, I, I think I think it's pretty much this. Uh I'm not, for example, right now, I'm not mentoring uh, anyone very specifically, I mean, other than my, you know, the, my, my, my di direct reports uh, and my my team. Um, and then for the kind of more global public, I think what's very important is to have the stellar examples of success uh, of female founders. So we didn't have it so far, right? And there are very few of them. And then there are stories to tell, probably about you know, management of personal life when you were when you were female and uh, you were a woman and you you want to have a, you have a career at this level, uh, etc. And there are very few examples of this, uh, and and there should be more of it. And I, I mean, hopefully you've seen things change during your 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 work career in terms of attitudes towards equality, diversity. But also wonder, do, do you have any thoughts as to how, because the situation, I think most people would say, isn't improving you know, fast enough. As you say, the IT industry is still, I think, over two thirds, you know, men working in that field. So any thoughts as to 
what can help improve that situation as well? I think there is a very simple uh, thing to do that, I mean, if I could ask my, my, my colleagues maybe in the industry, is to remove the awkwardness. Um, it doesn't happen so often. I think it happens less and less. Uh, it doesn't happen to me in Europe so much, but it did happen to me in San Francisco. Uh, when I enter a room and I feel that <laughs> colleagues are somehow, they, I mean, they didn't know with whom the meeting was, right? Exactly. It was like the meeting with the company and there's a woman who entered the room. And I feel a slight awkwardness uh, you know, in the room that lasts maybe, I don't know, a couple of seconds. Um, I mean, I, do, I don't think it is helpful. It just uh, assuming removing this maybe maybe actually just a culturally a pretty big step to normalizing uh, women in tech. Um, then I think there are many many uh, initiatives around education because if we are to fix something, we need to fix the funnel. Uh, you know, when I was a girl, nobody offered to me to teach me to play chess. I mean, why? <laughs> And traditionally, girls would be taught to knit and clean and bake, and while boys were doing other more creative stuff sometimes. So this is uh, this is looking at the education, you know, starting from kindergarten, really. Uh, I think you might see is like a girl, you know, good girls helping others and being kind of asked by the by the teacher to to help help smaller smaller kids, etc. Whereas where the boys can play. I mean, this is just, <laughs> this is unfair. I mean, the assumption shouldn't exist. Uh, but it goes toward general equality, not just in IT, but in fact, it also goes towards like how much time women will have to forge their own careers. If you are to learn tough stuff or work on a theorem, you can't exactly, you know, make schnitzels at the same time. Uh, sorry, it just doesn't work. No, 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 that's a, I love that illustration. I like that illustration. No, that's not great. And maybe just um, as we finish in terms of pathway itself, it'd be good. To, as I understand it, you, you have a, a, an innovative way of producing a, a data processing engine so perhaps you can just explain a little bit about what it is you know because the world and his wife is heading to ai chat gpt and all these kind of things but clearly there are different ways of of uh, addressing it so it'd be great just to understand what it is that pathway is doing yeah, so pathway is one layer for real-time intelligence it is a data processing engine uh which allows to do things like real-time machine learning so if you think of it right now uh, most of the of IT systems that we have deal with batch data, so static data. And by definition, all the data we get is old just because of the reality of engineering. And our goal as Pathway is to make machines think as we do uh, in real time. So you just, I just, you know, we just discussed the question of quality and how, how schnitzels should, should, shouldn't block us from <laughs> developing, developing theorems. Uh, and you just learned it, right? You processed it already. And so this is how machines should be working. And machines meaning on algorithms, programs, models. Um, and if you think about AI, because you you actually made a relationship with with uh, GPT and foundational models, uh, just if you put real time data with AI together, this is where the magic happens. I mean, AI is obviously way better if it relies on the freshest data possible. So that us as humans, we can we can rely on we can always get the freshest insight, even not just the freshest data, but the freshest insight uh, to use for our decision making or to use to I know orchestrate you know our supply chains, etc. Um, so Pathway is in fact a tool for developers, um, which allows them to develop complex uh, data pipelines, which mixing and matching static data with streaming data with with foundational models uh very very easily and this allows use cases which are kind of a bit a bit moonshot right like real-time real-time machine learning um etc presumably if i answer that correctly then because part of the problem with there once it's if you like it's got the data it that's what it thinks and it can't unlearn if you like what exactly doing. so with what you're doing you potentially can feed it different so it can change its you know view on something in as you say in real time which makes a so, big difference so so, so 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 it works in fact we we craft then learning not for the lms uh themselves and it's probably impossible just from scientific point of view to make lms uh, unlearn in the rigorous uh sense uh but you can do unlearning with with traditional models and we do have results updating so imagine you have classification and you have a, you know, you're classifying emails if it's spam or not spam. And at 
you do it as it messages arrive and it's very simple to do in pathway two lines of code in python um but then then at some point you you actually you you change your classification you realize that you know that sender uh was was not spam but uh, yeah, a genuine uh a genuine um interlocutor and then you want to update your uh, your classification of the past messages of the person, right? So you you want to you want to change your mind in a way, you change your opinion in light of the new data point that just arrived. So this is something that that happens in Pathway. In fact, there are showcases on the, on our website. You can you can try it out. Um, and then there are questions of you know deleting data, so deleting data from the sets that are being used, from data sets that are being used for training. And making sure that this effect, you know, this takes effect immediately on um, on functioning of the model. There is the question of you know, the right to be forgotten, especially in the EU, right? Um, so these are things that can be done uh, more easily, of course, in traditional models, and it can be can be done immediately when you're able to process data uh, in real time. Uh, and with Pathway, because Pathway Pathway has some architectural. Uh, are tricks, let's say, implemented, uh, which make it possible to 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 look actually at history at the same time as as you uh, as you process live data. Okay, um, I think we we covered most things I was wanting to ask. So, I mean, with the women ITP is fascinating, and the technology equally so. So, I really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you for your time, Susanna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure.